We have a special guest today. Her name is Erica. She is my dietitian. Also, hi, I'm back on YouTube after a very long break. So when I began getting all of these really difficult questions around my weight, specifically weight loss, I knew that I wanted to have a professional come and facilitate a healthy conversation around this because it's different if I'm talking about it and when she's talking about it. She is so knowledgeable, so amazing, and I'm so excited that you get to hear her speak. Before she comes here, I do wanna answer one thing, and that is if my weight changes have been a result of me doing something differently. My answer is no in the sense that I'm still in recovery. I'm very healthy mentally, physically, but I do have chronic illnesses, and this is something that has been a recent journey for me within the last couple of years. So my answer is also yes in the sense that I have had to change lifestyle things that were causing my body harm and pain. For many of us who have food intolerances or chronic illnesses, you know that we have to make these uh, changes in order to live a happy life. But also some of the comments have been pretty angry, demanding answers from me. And I hope that you know the reason I'm not answering them is for my community's safety. I am as transparent as I possibly can be with you, and I need you to trust that. If I went into detail about what I'm doing, that not only would be triggering for myself, like very triggering, that would also be triggering for you and providing you information that doesn't apply to your body. This is my story, my recovery, my body, and I get to share that. I also wanna make it very clear here that we're only talking about my story, my body, and general questions that we have for Erica because recovery is so sensitive. So now that we've got that covered, let's get to the question asking to Erica. The question asking to Erica? The questions, the questions that you've provided to Erica. Let's get to the questions that you've given me to ask Erica. I tried not working with you. <laughs> I tried very hard actually, and it failed. Well, hello, Erica. Hi there. This is my dietitian with the topic of weight, um, specifically all of the comments regarding uh, my weight loss. I wanted to get her on here so that you can have a professional's point of view. I'm glad you asked me and I think it's important because we're so conditioned to be thinking about weight and that being right or wrong or good or bad. I mean, weight is woven into our society, mm -hmm. our culture, our institutions, our medical institutions. You're not like recovering into a society that's like, welcome. When I see comments about my body, mm -hmm. it triggers me to think like I did mm -hmm. when I had an eating disorder, mm -hmm. but it'll be like really minuscule ways. Like it'll be like looking at myself in the mirror more often. Mm -hmm. It'll be body checking or wondering what my weight is. Mm -hmm. Those little things mm -hmm. that I didn't think of before reading mm -hmm. the comments yeah. that truly affect my mood and my day. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't allow me to fully be present. If your recovery journey results in unintentional weight loss, how can you avoid fixating on it? And the reality is nutritionally rehabilitating your body from years of restricting, that's going to result in gain, loss, or maintenance. If you're working on not restricting your food and healing your body results in weight loss, to try to, again, draw your attention back to what you're doing, which is hopefully we're trying to honor your body through honoring your hunger or satisfaction and work through that. Is it common to gain weight initially and then lose weight in mm -hmm. recovery? Mm -hmm. I've really seen all versions of this. Um, kind of like I was saying before, if I'm being completely honest, most people have lived in a body that is a suppressed size mm -hmm. or suppressed food intake and rehabilitation through nutrition, it takes healing. And healing your body is not always a pleasant process. Mm -hmm. It can be so uncomfortable and bring up so much, you know, even the sensation of fullness in your body. What could that bring up oh, for yeah. you? There's a difference between a desire for weight loss, I hope that I lose weight, and then intentionally pursuing it. Mm -hmm. There's not a most common experience that I see, but if I had to pick one, it would probably be people that are gaining weight um, 
while they're healing their body. Mm -hmm. Eating enough to sustain your body is often more mm -hmm. than they were eating before. Mm -hmm. And so it's not uncommon to have weight gain while healing. What's really interesting for me is that I found such happiness in my initial weight gain. It was almost like a honeymoon phase. But when you were healing, you were restoring neurotransmitters. Yeah. You're restoring your gastrointestinal function. You were getting used to the feeling of what it is like to go about your day mm -hmm. when you're eating enough. Mm -hmm. and Can intentional weight loss and recovery coexist? This is a hard truth. I um, encourage you to sit with it for a second. Feelings are going to come up hearing this. No. When we are trying to rehabilitate our bodies, heal from dysfunctional eating patterns, it is impossible to also be following external rules. Eat a little less of this. Don't eat that. Try to control the size of your body at the same time. These things work separately from each other. And it is hard to imagine controlling the size and shape of your body or seeking intentional weight loss, not completely getting in the way of listening to your hunger, seeking satisfaction, allowing yourself to eat until fullness. I know it's so hard to hear this, but it cannot um, exist together. Taking these steps to heal your body, have better self-care as it relates to eating, to nourish yourself. These steps are what research shows us time and time again, that these are the things that make you feel better. Do people generally have a baseline weight where their body naturally wants to be? So when we think about a baseline weight, I think about what is the weight that your body will be when you are eating in a mm. way, when you're nutritionally rehabilitated, when you've been, again, honoring your hunger, when you've been eating enough to function your body. And this can fluctuate throughout our lifetimes, um, depending on what else is going on in our lives or medications, or we just never know, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not that our weights can never change, but for most of us, I think that the goal in healing our relationship to food, healing our relationship to our body, is that whatever we're eating um, is not restricted to try to have a smaller body or to Ooh, focus on, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's so hard to not want to like know what that could be. Um, but it's, I think a myth of set point two is that, or this like baseline weight is that once you hit it, you're there forever. You know, yeah. I just had a client who she was like dealing with something in her life and it was like her body had changed and she had been in recovery for many years. And I guess I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about somebody else. <laughs> but she's like, is this okay? Yeah. You know, and it's just, there were things that, that she had gone through. Um, and again, that's the part that just, it, it, we, the goal is to focus on nutrition rehabilitation and to yeah. like trust and accept your body for whatever happens. I think that's why set point weight for me is so triggering because when people comment on it, like mix mm -hmm. in or set point weight, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. It's like, well, what are they going to say if I, yeah. if I gain weight or if I lose weight again, mm -hmm. like, will they say something's wrong with me? Sure. There's more to it than just right or wrong mm -hmm. answers. Kind of reminds me of like what set point weight theory is, is that there is a place where your body arrives when you have healed food, mm -hmm. when you have worked on nutrition rehabilitation, when you are living in the absence of disordered eating patterns, that that's what your weight is. It's trying to reverse the, you know, the equation, you know, we're not controlling weight and controlling food based on that. We're working on having an openness a permission to focus on the task at hand, which is healing your relationship mm -hmm. to food, nutrition rehabilitation and letting weight be what it is. And I think sometimes maybe a, a misconception of set point weight theory is that it is this like story arc or something of like, oh, you've settled and, yep. and you gained weight when you were healing and that's wrong. And then you went down and that's good. Yeah. And, and really, um, that's not, you know, how it works. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's really just, again, set point is hey, where's your body in the absence of disordered eating patterns or eating in a way that's limiting your, your food? I'm glad you're talking about the process of being triggered and how you know it can show up for you practically because really what I end up helping a lot of people with in their recovery or um, my, maybe my client's therapist and something that I could uh, recommend here or bring up is it's not unusual to be triggered by mm -hmm. other people. Uh, places, things, situations, comments, whatever, um, it, you know, it might be, and how do you take care of yourself in those situations? So I'm thinking of a client of mine 
who um, went to a bachelorette party and one of her friends, um, her friend was getting married, had lost a significant amount of weight and she hadn't seen her in a long time. And she's like, I'm doing me, I'm doing a good job mm -hmm. with my recovery, I'm taking care of myself. But man, did it bring up a lot when I saw her. It made me want to lose weight. It made me feel like I was wrong for being at the weight that I was, I had that desire mm -hmm. all over again. And I wondered whether I was doing this right or, um, you know, and, and just all that like pull to lose weight was so strong again. And um, it also made her like, oh, how did she do it? And, you know, yep. kind of wanting to know yep. all those things. So I think it's important to talk about that it's normal to be triggered um, by other people mm -hmm. in our recovery. And like I said, places, things, um, situations, um, being triggered as part of our recovery process. You know, hopefully you have your own toolbox of how do you take care of yourself when that happens, because it surely will happen. Yes. But there are dietitians that specialize in intuitive eating, health at every size. I mean, there's even at the NIDA website, National Eating Disorders, mm -hmm. um, there's Health Every Size website, ASDASH, um, intuitiveeating.org has a list of all dietitians and therapists and doctors and nurses that specialize in intuitive eating, um, International Federation of Eating Disorder Dietitians, um, all eating disorder dietitians all over the world. There are, you know, searches that you can do to, to find people. Maybe we can link some. Thank you so much for being so here. I know my community has and will find so much value in hearing you speak. Um, if you want more of Erica, I will link her below. She is amazing. She's obviously helped me so much through my own recovery. Goodbye.